one of the things that I've noticed with people trying to start businesses is they use the process that should be started in a physical business for a venture business or they'll use a venture business process for a physical business or they'll use a service business process for a physical business. Setting up your business in 2015 means that you should set up your business appropriately for what level of business it is. I'll give you some more insights. I'm using some terms that some people may not know, like take a venture business. That's Amazon, Uber, Facebook. These are businesses that people with very deep pockets said, hey, we think this is going to win. And they opened up those deep pockets and put coins all over the table, gold doubloons all over the place. One for you, one for you. And their bet won. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of the Hustler Mindset Project. Got something new for you. 30 days to $3,000 is on today at 6 p.m. And this course is much different than 30 days to $2,500. I raised the ante in many, many different ways. It's leaner, cleaner, faster, and more organized, which is just better for you. So if you want to start a business, and let's be really clear, any type of business. There are many people who are like, hey, does this is this one type of particular business? <laughs> is it about eBay? Or is it about Craigslist? Or is it about Amazon? <laughs> no, this is for people who are warriors. This is for people who are not fucking afraid to try. This is the course for folks who want to do something with their life. I will tell you, it's going to be a little quirky. It's going to be a little fun. But at the end of the course, you'll be so much better situated to build a business than before you took it. One, then you have a lifestyle business. That's what I do. I'm a writer, a digital pimp. I create eBooks, I create audio books because my big thing is freedom. I believe in creating things that make money when I'm not around. Just in the case of yesterday, I spent all day yesterday working on some personal business and I came home to money. That's how lifestyle businesses can work or any business that will work if you build it properly. But it's a lot easier with a lifestyle business. Then you have the service business. One of the things that many people who have no clue to what they want to do, don't know what their talents are, are really kind of like, I don't know what I want to do when I grew up, Glendon. A service business is for you. What's the service business? You go to your friend's Ed. Yo, Ed, uh, I'll pick up your groceries this week for 20 bucks or shoot for the month. You know, make it 25. I'll pick them up every day. You do you give me the cash service. You help people out. Carpentry, cleaning houses, washing cars, huge, huge, huge businesses. Then you have the physical business, which is like Walmart or is Macy's or the furniture store. Very different businesses, very different behavior, and very different way of the venture business. This is what you see all of the time, all over the internet. Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all these are Twitter. They're all venture businesses. These are businesses that require a lot of money to get off the ground. Someone had to say, yo, boy, yeah. That looks pretty damn good. All right, I'm going to throw some coins on it. Now, the thing is, most of those businesses fail and a lot of money is lost. And we look at the winners and sometimes I'm guilty of it myself. And I really have been trying to monitor that behavior because essentially most of us are not going to start the next Facebook. Most of us are not going to start the next Uber. However, many of us can start a business that pays the bills that sustains us and that's the most important part but when you start looking at like a facebook there's not going to be another facebook for a minute because the conditions were right when i say this people say that i'm hating they had no competition the idea was grand the execution was brutal but they had no competition youtube they had no competition. Facebook wasn't first to market with social network. It wasn't. No, you had that thing with Tom, MySpace. That was first. So they just had better execution. Uber. 
There was taxis out there before they bear their execution. So part of the thing is timing, execution, and vision. But the thing is, you've got to go ahead and get that money. And this is something else too. And this is why I have talked to a few people. My thoughts are do as much as you can with what you have before you ask for money. Bootstrap the hell out of what you're doing because when people open up the pocketbook and put the gold coins on the table, they're taking equity of the company. They may not get anything. And one of the, and rightfully so. If I come up to you and say, hey, here's uh, $3 million worth of gold coins, but uh, I'm going to need 50% of the company as a uh, collateral. If you need my $3 million in gold coins and you're desperate for the money, you're just going to jump through the hoop. Now, the thing is, as long as this is in the experimental phase, it don't mean anything. I'll give you a story of how things get real when the money hits the table. There's even a, a video about it on YouTube. Had this partnership with this dude. Things were cool. Then we had some big sales. And I mean, he was just giving me more. It's like, whoa, that's a lot of money. I was like, yeah, that's what we were doing this for, to make a lot of money. And it's just... When people see money and they have some obligation to it, they have a they have a right to it, then it becomes somewhat fuzzy how much rights do you have and how much money you're gonna get. So we had this big blow up because the money was coming in, but because of his personal situation, um, crazy stuff, he had mad bills. I didn't. It was just like, you know, hey, you know, your thing is, your situation is not as bad as mine. So maybe you can subsidize my life with your hard work. That's what he was saying. And that's what he wanted. And thus the partnership ended. But when you're dealing with someone who's in a economically better situation than you are, they don't need you. I don't care how good your idea is. They don't need you because. We separated, his business failed, and we kept thriving. So when you're looking at these venture businesses and getting all just like starry-eyed and just like, oh, this is amazing, this is wonderful, this is awesome, I want to do that, I'll be the next Gates, I'll be the next Zuckerberg, I'll be the next Cuban. Really? Why? Why will you be that? See, this is the thing. When Cuban, Zuckerberg, and Gates went out, they didn't go out and say, you know what? Yeah, put your coins on the table, and we all going to be billion. No, that, no, no. That, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the methodology. That wasn't the process. The process was we're going to try to serve as many. We're going to serve the world. Google's mission, I think Google's mission is to index the world pretty heady stuff because whenever you start talking about billions you're going to need millions and millions of people to stack up in whatever platform that you're trying to build that's the reason snapchat sold for so much because they were servicing so many people they had reach they had game and it was just like yeah we're going to give you these gold blooms but the venture business model does not work for everything because say you want to do uber right and you need a car but you don't want the uber plan and your credit is shot so you go to grandmama 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 uh i got this idea but i'm gonna need for you to get me a car because i can't get one because my credit is whack and you go ahead and enter into this partnership with grandmama get the car and you're out there driving but the thing is if grandmama is gangster, you got a partner and an obligation because grandma was like, oh, you know what? Uh, you're doing well driving. Great. Great. I need some extra Medicaid pills. I need some extra hypertension pills. And uh, I need you to go get that for me because you my bitch. I mean, seriously, you put yourself in the position of being someone's beholden to someone and being their bitch when you ask for money i was like broker than broke real broke and i had uh, I, I just couldn't ask I, I, ref I was like you know what i'm gonna figure this out i could not ask it was one of my better decisions it produced a higher level of execution to me but 
when you are dealing with people and other and their money, you always hear it. Have this ideal OPM, other people's money. Other people's money can be very expensive, very expensive. So if you're an early stage founder, I suggest you do as much as you possibly can before you go asking for money. And then ask yourself this. And this is something that I've looked at frequently with businesses. You get a company. They're making like a million in sales, but for some reason, they got to go out and get this additional money to grow. And then if the business goes out of business, then they really no one has any money. I look at these businesses that are built on remarkably low margins as insane. I remember someone was having a discussion in the group and someone was like, well, if I can sell a thousand units, two, three percent margin, I'm good because of the flow of the turn. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. I don't care how fast that shit is turning right now. It will slow down at some point. It's just going to slow down. You're going to have peaks and valleys and you may get caught in a valley because you don't have any money, but you need your money, but your money's tied up in products. So I, I see this stuff all of the time because I'm just like, no, no, no. You, you have all of these things just going on in terms of building these businesses, but they are so expensive to build because people make them expensive. They just make them utterly, utterly expensive when they don't have to be. Part of the issue is a lack of foresight. And what I mean by this is the decisions that you make today are going to determine your tomorrows. So say you're 25 and you have this idea for the business, but you're doing it the regular way. You're going to get all your ducks in a row. You're going to make sure that you don't have any debt. You're just going to do all this pre-planning. And by the time that you're ready, you're 23. You got money in the bank. You got all this stuff. But you got one problem. That ideal that you had, that you were, there was a winner. Conditions have changed. They're changed. You cannot wait a year or two years or three years or four years why you get your shit together because conditions continually change. If you have an idea, get started with what you have right now, where you are, because as you build, you're going to learn some stuff. I was watching this really, really interesting uh, story about this makeup artist and she went from nothing to giving seminars, doing the makeup of, um, of stars. And it was just because she put herself out there with what she had, where she was with what, I mean, that, that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, when you're building a business, your most successful days are your ugliest days. That's where the success happens in those ugly moments when there's nobody around. People are like, oh, that shit's funny. People are laughing at you. People are making jokes. People are like, oh, you're not going to the party. You're not going to the beach. You know, it's Saturday. It's 2 a.m. You in the lab. You at your desk. You're in the factory. You're making products. And you don't have any money in your pocket. That's where success is built. And this is why. When you can endure all of that bullshit, when you can put through effort and still wake up with a good attitude after going through that, you have internally made yourself a much stronger person. One of the reasons that so many people, businesses fail, and when I say fail, I'm not talking about the concept. You can have an ideal that doesn't do well, but the business could still go on, is the minute as soon as shit gets janky and shit will get janky, they freak out. They freak out. I had a client who got into this business. When they got into it, the money was flowing. It was making money. That's the reason they reached out to me is because the money stopped flowing like it was flowing. And they had a really, really bad day and called me up. We were talking about it and they were just freaking out. And I was like, okay. Take your camera phone now. Take your phone now, right? Take a picture of the wall. 
and you know, he thought it was the silly shit. So like, take a picture of the wall. Takes a picture of the wall, and I was like, okay, pull up the picture in your phone. And he's like, okay, what does this do? The day is just a snapshot, just like that picture you just took. That's it's just a snapshot. Now you got the you got you got an obligation to yourself. You can hold on to this day and put it in your fucked up album, or you can delete it and move on. And that's what many people do. When things get bad, when things get janky, they take a snapshot and they put it in the fucked up album. Oh, I fucked up here. And then when when the fucked up album gets so big, it's just like I can't look at it no more. So I'm going to stop trying. That's when you fail. And this is what happens with the venture business. This is what happens with any business, but more so with the venture business because people are expecting this stuff to be so quick and successful. I'm going to give you a hard number here. It's 11. Yes, 11. 11 years. That is the average time it takes an entrepreneur to make their first million. Not their first million dollar year, but collectively their first million. Why? Because there's a whole bunch of giggles and fuck ups. There's a whole bunch of things that go wrong. There's a whole bunch of things that are just ridiculously hard at times. And you just like, wow, that's just, I didn't expect that to happen. And I didn't expect that to happen. And that's why it takes so long. But many people, and I'm really, really harping on this venture business is they're, they're designing their whole lives behind being the next Cuban or something. And it's just preposterous. You have a better shot of being the next, uh, I guess, Dwayne around the street with a service station. Now, you may laugh at Dwayne and his service station, but his daddy passed it down to him and it doesn't have a mortgage and it makes good coin every month. I mean, you just have a better chance at something. And I'm not going to say don't don't try and don't reach and don't don't think it's possible. What I'm saying is govern yourself in the manner that you do not blow your enthusiastic wad on one thing and then become despondent and don't try anymore in life. And that happens to many, many people. They go ahead and they try. It doesn't work out. And they're just like, I'm out of this. I can't win. I can't play this game anymore. It's over. I'm out. Life wins. I'm <laughs> tapping out. Then later on in life, they rip back and they wish they had tried harder. So I'm just kind of giving you some guidelines and some points on how to moderate yourself, how to be a better entrepreneur. Now, the lifestyle business is another thing that everybody wants. It's like, you know, I was on the Internet and I saw this guy. His name was Joe. And Joe was standing on the beach next to a camel and the camel was talking. And then the camel was saying, hey, you could be like Joe. If you go to this website, hit this landing page, enter your email address. And within 90 days, you'll be here on the beach with us. And they both give a thumbs up. The lifestyle business is fun and the lifestyle business is possible. But. There's one little wrinkle that kind of messes it up for many people. Many people don't have enough life to make the style work. What I mean by that, they haven't done anything in life. That's why the learning curve looks like a fucking vertical building because they come. It's like it's just straight up because. When you do something in life, when you've built something already, when you had some things that were going on. You can pull from that and you can use those resources. You can use those connections. But when you are doggone brand new spanked naked, everything is a, it's like being a baby. Everything is new to you. Everything has to be learned. Everything has to be assigned a label. Everything. And with the lifestyle business, if you had a really good career and Clark Howard talked about this years ago, with people working from home and viable business concepts. It's like, hey, if you were an accountant and you worked from home and became a CPA, that worked. Or if you were a business consultant and you were for this company, you started working from home, that worked. My thing worked due to an incredible amount of hustle. And I did not approach business and uh, publishing from a writer's point of view, I approached it from a business point of view. Very, very business-like from the beginning. That made all the difference in the world because when you are out here building stuff, 
you have to understand that a lifestyle business means you got to have a life. Like if you were someone who traveled for 10 years and you knew all of the nooks and crannies of so many countries, then you could write a blog and that would be very exploratory and very informative because you did something with your life. You have many people, they're just trying to do a lifestyle blog or, and I'm not going to say it's all bad, but there's many people that try to assign the nomenclature of a life coach to me. And that's something I vigorously rejected. I'm a process dude. Your life is what you make it. It's your choice. What you choose to do with your 24 hours per day is on you. And the whole life coach movement is I see so many people who once again, have not had a life. They haven't been through anything. They haven't gone through the highs and the lows and I don't know how that works when, you know, I, I think I told you I was going to write a relationship book and I just kind of backed away from it because I didn't want to be that guy because it was going to require me to do things that I really didn't have a lot of experience with. And then I was like, you know what, let this go and jump into what you know. But you get these things with uh, creating a lifestyle business work from home great work a few hours great when you can get it but everyone doesn't have enough life to make a lifestyle business work you do have people here online who have become what i call internet famous and i've seen many people do it they have huge fan bases and many of them if not most cannot monetize that attention they can't do anything to get some money to that attention. And it was just like really, really interesting that you've got 20 million followers or this or that. And that's where I think the advertisers have come in to help people monetize with Instagram and help people monetize in other platforms or Vine. Because they're helping these people who had no way to do this. They had the attention, they had the following, but there was no way they can make money from that. And that happens with a lot of the lifestyle guys. Then you have uh, people who are getting into processes such as Kindle. You are Amazon FBA and they're creating courses. I looked at that space and I really, really shied away from it because it's great right now. I know you didn't expect me to say that, but it's great right now. The problem is these things are becoming saturated. Maybe five years, maybe seven years, maybe eight years, but they're becoming saturated. And if you don't learn how to build something organically, what I mean by that is sit down, analyze what the heck you're doing, go out and get some feedback from customers and build from that. Because the way that I would tell you to build a business is the bootstrap. Execute. You got an idea? Just go out and try it. You know, write down like a one page business plan. Just go out there and try it. Find out because you're going that's where you're going to get your real feedback. You're not going to get your feedback sitting in your house, your basement or at Starbucks going like, OK, well, I think this. No, that's not that's that's good estimation. Those are assumptions. Feedback is when you hold up your product in front of the customer and they go, Ooh, we that's so pretty. Or they go, damn, that stink. That's feedback. That's the stuff that would make you money. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you got to get. So, ex, ex, you know, execute, experiment and evaluate cuz now you're you're executing, right? And you're getting this feedback loop. Now it's time to evaluate, make revisions, change stuff, re then go out and execute again. Then you take that information and come back and you reassess. Then you go back out and you execute again. If you notice, execute is a big part of this. So many people are in what I call perpetual planning. Well, you know, when I get everything together, you know, the kids grow up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go out and do that thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Because one thing, and I'm seeing this with some of my friends. Some people, the older they get, the less ambitious they become. It's just, mm, can't do that. No, that's too hard. Nah, I don't want to do that. Mm, 
that's going to take too much energy. I feel like a nap. So you, you got that stuff going on. Now, for those of you who are like, what the hell do I do? How do I do it? How do I make money? I have no talent. I have no money. I don't have a car. You're just going to have to sell your most valuable asset, your time and your physical labor. That's it. That's the service business. Time and labor. For the people who grab the laundry out of the van and run up to the 10th floor and drop it off, that's the service business. That's what you're going to have to do. If you have no money, no game plan, no no concept of what you want to do, you're going to have to do something service-oriented. And then it could be really, really interesting if you get out there and hustle. I mean, hustle hard. Because when you become a service business, everyone's a potential customer. When I mean, if you're walking, you have to like talk to people. It's like, hey, this is, hey, I got Steve's service business. Yeah, this is what we have. Here's my card. What is your information? Because I want to put you on the list because I'm going to send you a free gift. It's not just enough to give them your card. The card don't mean nothing. Yeah, throw that away or write someone else's number on the back of it. You want to engage these people. But if you don't know what to do, you have no clue to how to do it. Service business. Washing cars, cleaning houses, walking dogs, cleaning dog cages, anything that gives people their time back and they don't want to do it. That is what's for you. Now, the physical business is self-explanatory. Lots of money is needed to start it because I remember going to the cab business license office thinking I was going to come out of there only $135 light. <laughs> After that lady asked me that question, it's like, are you planning on doing any renovations? No, it's just going to slap some paint on the wall. Okay. You're doing renovations. Bam. Another hundred bucks. Oh yeah. You need to go around here and see this guy. He's the civil engineer and nowhere on that website was any of this stuff. And I was like, what? And then, you know, I started talking to people who were there who got permits. I was like, yeah, they do that. You meant you say you're going to do something. Yeah, you got to go see the little little dude and he's a little squirrely. I was too through. So when you start talking about physical businesses, and this is why I, for years I've been telling people, do not open a store. I mean, it's in my book. It's don't open a store. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Get your cash flow up from the internet sales and if you still got that store at itch and that you got a scratch because being a proprietor having a storefront that's very respectable and proper if you need that i understand go ahead and get it go ahead and get it but i'm telling you it's like having a child that does not ever grow up but people want to do the physical business now let's have another discussion Let's take the venture business and let's take the physical business. What do they have in common? Both cost a shitload of money to build. (laughs) And that's really where people start to fall down. When you are beholden, remember, when they're like, you get the gold blooms and they're like putting them all over the table and they're like, hey, you get one. But for every one you get, I need three back. (laughs) They're playing that game. It's no wonder a lot of entrepreneurs are broke or when the business goes bust, they have to go out and get jobs because they have no money. They have paper wealth. They have valuations, but they didn't have any, you know, that green stuff, those little dead presidents that are sitting in your wallet. that's like, hey, my name's George Washington. They didn't have any of that. And that's why they had to go back to working shitty jobs because they did not have any, they didn't build any wealth. And the other day, you're going to get a little flow then you can put that in something else. But what holds people back is fear, fear of failure. And I, I'm going to sit here and just be honest with you. And I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to speak to you very slowly and softly and say these words to you. As I look deep, deep in your eyes, you are going to fail. Okay. Elephant. Hey, it's out the room. You know, you heard it. You, you felt it. I was holding your hand. I even squeezed your palm gently. It's going to happen. Now, the real question is, after you get knocked down, are you going to get back up? Because, see, that's what success is. The success happens down there on the mat because then, you you know, getting up is the end result. But the success is, oh, that's a big motherfucker. 
But you know what? You know, when I hit him in the side, the knee buckled. So I'm gonna keep working that side. I'm just take a, I'm gonna take a little, like another two seconds, gather myself, but I'm getting up off this mat. That's where the success is built. That's where the success is built. Though so if you are someone who's like, I don't know what the hell kind of business I want to start, service business. If you're someone who's really disciplined, who's really, you know, the type of person that can wake up at six and work to 6 p.m. with nobody going, yeah, boy, yeah, girl, get to work. Okay, you can do a lifestyle business because one of the things about lifestyle business is frequently it's just you. And since it's just you, you must have discipline. You must have a process. You must have a way of getting this stuff done. Otherwise, um, you're going to have some problems and consequences. And they're not going to be pretty. They're going to be kind of like, whoa, Nelly, I didn't know this was going to happen. I don't know. Whoa, I didn't know. I didn't know. So those are your choices if you are broke. Lifestyle business, service business. If you just have a dream, if you are MLK, I have a dream. And you've got it on paper and you believe, I'm talking about, you believe so hard that even your clothes believe, your, your sleeves be like, yeah, we're going to do this, man. You believe that hard. Okay, go ahead and put your hat in the ring and start searching for gold to blooms. And understand, gold to blooms aren't that easy to get. There's a lot of people looking for gold to blooms and they want the guy to take his pocketbook and turn it over and just let them roll all over the table. The guys with the gold coins, they're like, huh. Every day I get somebody asking me for a gold coin. But it's only every so often that I actually want to give one up. You know, that's what you're dealing with with that. But this is just a long and drawn out method of how to build a business in 2015. Because you have to understand that the businesses that you build today will reflect your income tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the American Hustler podcast. As I said earlier, got a special offer for you. 30 days to $3,000. It's a different kind of course. And what's really, really cool about this one is the educational part, part of it has been trunicated. What I mean is it's much cleaner, much to the point. And also, you, you have a lot of work to do, just letting you know. So be sure to get in. This week, I am offering pre-sale pricing from Monday, well, Tuesday until Friday, since that's when it starts, and you'll get a little bit every day. Plus, you're going to get some special content. Now, what I mean by special content, if you don't know, I've got this new thing called Badass Products by Badass Entrepreneurs or Badass Hustlers. So what I'm doing is in part of building businesses that don't involve eBay and that don't involve Amazon, that don't involve uh Craigslist is I'm going out and getting people who are doing the things that I say. And I get people who are like, oh, no, you know, you tell us to leave eBay. And you tell us to leave Amazon who sound like little whiny bitches. And you didn't tell us where to go. It's like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to hold your fucking dick while you pee. Get over yourself. So if you're someone of substance and substantial and you fucking believe in yourself, this is the course for you because... I'm going to do so many things that are different, but back to the badass products by badass hustlers. Uh, there's three episodes done on um, the next one to release Monday. I'm going to give you some insights because part of your course, you're going to get the after, you know, you're going to get the after party. When I put up these episodes of badass products by badass hustlers, I seriously edit them down. There's a lot of stuff that goes on that if you just see the YouTube version, you're not going to see the after scenes. You're not going to see the after party. And I had this wonderful conversation with Anthony Zimba and his wife, Amber. And it's like two and a half hours long. This guy started a business in six weeks. Well, three days. And at the six week point, he quit his job. And let me be really, really clear. His wife just had a baby two months ago. Starting a new business, quitting job, new baby. So seriously, he's got to have some really good flow for him to be confident. And you are going to love to end it with him because he gives up a lot of gems. He gives a lot of juice. And this is just going to be strictly for members only to get this access. You'll see the, the general 
episode on YouTube, but the real behind the scenes, the nitty gritty, the really real, real, that will only be if you're a member of the Hustler Mindset Project or 30 days for $3,000. So with that, this is Glendon, and I will definitely see you soon.